All right, and we're on, so. So you're saying that it was mainly a lot more of a collaborative effort. It wasn't necessarily just you or just John. No, I mean, it was it was mostly John. You know, if we... Oh, really? Okay. Uh, and I, I think that's always been true. You know, I think okay. there's different people collaborate to different extents. Um, For sure. But, you know, those first couple of records that I played on, three and four... You know, I'm only on half the songs on those records. You know, it's and John was doing stuff under the name prior to us playing together. Yeah. You know, there was already the yeah. the double disc that uh, Tumult put out and OCS two disc that I guess what was that Narnak uh, yeah, would have done. The CD and and that's when I that's when I met John. Um, so I think my main my main role was. Uh, encouraging him to start doing that kind of material live and and okay. not just you know do the uh at the time he was doing coach whips and he had done pink and brown so he was i mean he was kind of this like rock and roll yeah. party party wild man but on the side he was doing this kind of interesting acoustic music um and i was like oh you should you should start doing this more or do it live or you know his response was okay I, i'll do that but you're you're gonna be my backup band yeah. so that's that's sort of how it started um yeah so i think uh oh, sure. i think you can maybe credit me with like arranging some things more than strictly writing anything you know if i'm okay. gonna, if we're gonna be like fair you know john has always been the driving force of that thing um okay for sure you know um, different that kind different, of different things but yeah that kind of brings me to uh, another question that we had do you know what were like ocs shows kind of more like what were they more centered around was it like before ocs did you guys have a lot of different i don't really know was it kind of like i'm sure it was a different dynamic with just you and john yeah because there's like um, no recordings of any of those yeah 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 there's um i really love those that i mean that was my favorite uh time in the in that band was the very early shows because it was uh it was just so stripped down and musically uh sparse and skeletal which i really liked um and then you know we'd we were just we were friends who hung out all the time and i think that came through uh, on stage there's a lot of like you know cool. a string would break you had to tune for five minutes and we would just start telling jokes or like making fun of each other um uh just stuff like that you know definitely like something that would that uh could only happen at small shows i think when a yeah. band is first starting out you know and everybody's yeah. kind of on board for that um as the shows got bigger you know there's less and less room for you know telling jokes for five minutes while somebody's trying to tune their guitar or, or whatever um yeah for sure but the early shows were definitely pretty pretty loose. Uh, I don't think we, you know, rarely made set lists and and just were were kind of just hanging out on stage, honestly. Okay, yeah, for sure. So then, um, was it just? Oh, oh, sorry. No, no, you're all good. All right. You go. So, uh, so then for OCS three and three and four, was that just you and John? Yeah, yeah. I think there's a a song or two with some other people uh, on there. Matt Hartman, who was the drummer for Coach Whips, played the saxophone oh, or clar clarinet on a song or two. Um, it was a Mike maybe, Donovan, right? From Mike Sick Donovan, Alps? Mike Donovan yeah. from Stick Alps. At one point, the we were trying to have him full time as like a second vocalist, um, but it just, I, uh, it just didn't. It didn't work out. He had other. He had better things to do. You know. Oh, yeah, I get you. Um, were there a few? Were there a few other tracks with Mike that you know just never really saw the light of day? No, I, there's probably some like practice cassettes. For a while, I was I was recording our cassette, our practices on cassette, and I think somewhere in a shoebox behind me, under this table somewhere, there might be a cassette with Mike Donovan singing some backup vocals okay. on stuff, but nothing. Be cool to hear. Nothing officially recorded or or released. Yeah. Um yeah, Mike's Mike's great. He's yeah, uh sure. sick alps are, are 
probably one of my favorite bands from that from that era of San Francisco music. So yeah, was it pretty fun to work with him while it while it lasted? Oh yeah, Mike's great. He's a good yeah, guy. Sure. Uh, definitely fun to hang out with. Super super nice. Very mellow. Mellow. Yeah, dude. What you would expect from from his records, basically. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to ask another thing. Um, so when it comes to live music, I know that you did an interview uh, probably a few months ago now where it was, um, the guy asked you kind of about live music and you said that it eventually kind of just kind of drained you a little bit. Like you weren't really that yeah. interested in it. Yeah. Would you say, would you say that, would you give any advice to people that want to get into live music that could kind of like work their way around that? Or do you think it's just kind of meant for some people and not meant for others? It's kind of what yeah. I'm... Yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, uh, yeah, I have no advice. Man. I mean, clearly, oh, really? because, because I, because I quit. <laughs> it. Um, no, I think, uh, you know, what really, what I really did not, uh, or what really kind of wore on me, um, was like to, uh, touring the U S and just being in a different bar every night. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, I just don't have I don't have the endurance for that. Um, yeah. I mean, it takes. Well, a I lot did. Of I power. did, but I just I don't want to. You know, like um, I think it. I think you know we toured the UK at one point, and that was a that was a more interesting experience. Um, partly because. I, I mean, it's a different country, so there's that whole element to it, but uh just the venues were more varied you know you play at like okay, an yeah. arts center or like uh upstairs at some pub that's like you know the pub is a little bit different than the bar it's kind of everybody hangs out there and there's different things going on in different parts of it um but yeah i think just the like you know next day yeah, different bar kind of thing and i think you know you just kind of have to uh be willing to tough that out you know i think it gets more interesting i'm sure it's more interesting for them now uh playing bigger venues or more varied venues but at the time i was just kind of just kind of done with it yeah you i mean know? it takes a lot of takes a lot of willpower much less in your late 40s to just like continually just keep yeah, touring yeah. And... you know i like um i like having a garden i like having pets you know yeah like I'm, a, I'm a, like kind of a stay-at-home person when it comes down to it. Uh, I like to get out, obviously, but for sure, yeah. Not for like the, um, nine months out of the year. <laughs> was the uh, OC? I'm sure on stage it was very different, but was the OCs and Burmese experience kind of like backstage and how that all played out? Was that a lot different too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to talk to Burmese after they play. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> okay i get you not the most approachable uh vibe there um yeah. which was funny you know because again just like everyone involved was nice but the definitely the vibe was of the music is so menacing um yeah for sure. that it's, it's not like there's definitely a lot more levity with a band like like ocs or the ocs i guess okay. or like, yeah. uh like Burmese is not like a band where people are like telling jokes between songs or or like you know yeah i get you it's a different kind of fun <laughs> for sure for sure yeah yeah uh and i was only in Burmese like briefly really um, yeah was it just for that one album you know i'm not even on an official album i think there's a couple live things that i show up on they were doing these live uh cdrs for a while and i think i show up on a couple of those but oh, okay. um, it was around the time men came out like after that oh okay that album was released uh was when i was playing with them and again that was just like i was friends with mike green one of the one of the bass players um we hung out all the time and it just sort of happened because of that um, and yeah, then uh, sure. i think there were some scheduling conflicts and it got more of uh, got to be more of a more of a scheduling issue than anything else. Also, they're so loud. 
uh yeah. the, pra the practice space was like a concrete room and i we would practice and then for the, like the next 12 hours i couldn't hear anything you know i was just like i don't understand how y'all have been doing this for years this is nuts yeah. uh but yeah great band what uh, would you say was your favorite song that you did with the ocs oh like, um, across all the time that you were with them that's a good question uh I'm really partial to a lot of the stuff uh, that was recorded around Sucks Blood. Um, okay. I think that's a that was a high point. Uh, Golden Phones, I think, is a really good song. That's a good one, yeah. Uh, um, there's a song that wasn't that was recorded for Sucks Blood that didn't end up on it. Uh, is that the one that just got released? Expert of Inner Vision. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that song pd's pd's uh doing this like rem guitar part on it i don't know it just there's something about that song i really love yeah but it finally uh saw the light of day are there any For other sure. songs like that oh things that are were kind of left behind yeah um they yeah, one or two here and there uh there were a couple of songs that me and john would do live that we just couldn't get like a decent recording of they kind of got ditched. Um, but not too many, no. Um, I think you can figure out, or or we could figure out pretty quickly, like, ah, this isn't going to work. And then, uh, you know, I, John has, like, an idea every five minutes, so it's not like you really got to hold on to everything yeah. and work it to death um you know if, if something didn't sound right and i couldn't make any suggestions or add anything to it that would make it work and he couldn't come up with anything we would just drop it and move on um so there's not a lot of like buried stuff like that you know uh i'm not sure why that song that didn't make it to the original album release uh i love it yeah, yeah for sure so I um, see the oh. saw behind you. Oh is yeah, is that the is that the musical saw? Yeah, that is. That's the uh, that's the same same one. Do you still play it? Uh every once in a while, not super often. Um, it's fun, you know, uh, but it's not really. Uh, It's not like you're really going to sit down and write a song on the saw, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like something that you add on to, to something uh, as an accent or whatever, but. I think it, uh, I think it shines the most on memory of a cutoff head. Oh, wow. Thanks. I think some of the songs on uh, there, like with the added saw, it like really helps the atmosphere. Yeah. It's hard to record. Um, it's hard to mic. Uh but I think the recording on that rec John recorded that uh, in his home studio. And I think he did a really good job of making me sound good at it. <laughs> yeah, that, I love that record. It was like a reunion of sorts. Yeah. Uh, that was mostly John and John and Bridget together. Uh, and then, you know, they asked me to, to come out to LA and, and do some, do some stuff on it. And, and I did, it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but it was, you know, it was most, I think it was mostly done by the time I got out there. Um, like a lot of the, you know, there's multiple guitar parts and a lot of the vocal harmonies had already been laid down. So it was, there was a lot there for me to, to play along with, you know, it was, it was real easy to just sort of slot in, but that yeah, was fun. Do you I think, think it adds be... a lot on um oh sorry I no, think it adds a lot on uh grave blockers I think it's I think that's a really great addition on grave blockers especially oh yeah uh kind of you know kind of getting this like weird haunting atmosphere I think is a really cool way of adding uh -huh. it and I think it's yeah. um I think uh oh shoot I might just blank um here in the story in that other interview about how you got the saw from the uh the guy at the movie theater oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really theater, cool yeah. story too yeah. yeah yeah for sure yeah so on on grave blockers that song uh that was recorded uh at the same time we were doing uh cool deaths 
and Dave Siddick from from TV on the radio and and other things uh, recorded that, and he he had me do five or six saw tracks and he was playing them back to me at different speeds and having me play along with them uh and sort of mixing them in real time um so i think he deserves he deserves a little bit of the credit for the the atmosphere really cool. on that song. i think a lot of the stuff that we recorded with him um it's cool i'm glad we did it uh but I feel like the uh, that's one of the songs where it worked the best. That kind of mm -hmm. like big studio. That was our first time in like a big studio like that. Um, and working with someone else as a producer who was kind of making decisions. Uh, that was an interesting experience. But I think that's that song in particular came out really, really well. Definitely, uh, yeah. I pointed that. Yeah. Yeah, I have yeah, the sure. uh, I have like the original of grave blockers and i'm too scared to take out the cdr <laughs> right that little it's like the three inch uh cdr yeah, yeah. yeah. it's still like yeah. glued in there or whatever and i'm like too scared to take it out yeah yeah that's understandable <laughs> <laughs> um i had a i had a question we um we asked online uh some other people that were wondering certain questions that we would want to ask you and okay. i think one of the most interesting ones was the um what did you guys do to determine and choose filming spots and filming locations for uh, the hounds? And uh, how did you guys manage to get your um, your equipment oh, yeah. all powered up in these remote locations? Yeah. Um, I think we had a couple of spots in mind, but some of them we definitely were just driving around. Um, okay. And we had a generator. Uh And I think we we just we were able to set it up far enough away that you can't really hear it on most of the recordings. Also, it was recorded really well. I mean, there's like a professional sound person recording it whose name I embarrassingly can't remember at the moment because he did a freaking outstanding job with all that stuff. Um, and then uh, Brian, who was involved in Castleface, was filming it. Uh, so, I mean, those guys are, they're professionals, you know, they do, they do real live, real, real movie and commercial and TV work. Um, they, they have a lot of really high, high end equipment and know how to use it properly. And, um, again, it's another one of those things where, uh, they definitely, the people who, who were filming it and recording it definitely get a lot of credit for that, uh. But yeah, some of those spots were just like places we'd seen around town or places that we'd been to. Uh, and some of them were just sort of found like, oh, we, we should do something on the beach today, you know, or, or whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, just driving around with a generator. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Did you have a lot of, uh, did you have a lot of say in the structure of the movie? Did you have any, nope. was that, no, was that all just, you were kind of the ride? I had none. I had okay. no say. Um, yeah, I don't I, I don't even know if I've watched the whole thing. Well, I'm sure I have, but it's been a long time. I love the recordings. I, I um I get I, I think some of the I'm glad that that those recordings exist because I think some of the uh studio recordings, especially all the cool death stuff, um I like them, but they they cover up some of what the band actually sounded like in some yeah. cases. Do you know what I mean? Like I think one of the best know. examples of it's that almost is like a... A dub, it's almost like a dub version of the band yeah. or something. You know? mm -hmm. Like it's like somebody took it and mixed it and it sounds really cool, but it it was not necessarily accurately showing what the band sounded like at the time. And I, I think the stuff on Hounds really does that. And I, I love it for that reason. For sure, yeah, I yeah. feel like one of the best examples of that is We Are Free. Because yeah. in uh like Island Raiders, you can't really hear the guitars at the end, but yep. in like the Hounds, it's like perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's uh like I said, I, it's just um in a lot of ways, it's just more uh 
more true to the spirit of the thing, I guess, yeah. in some ways. I don't know. I don't want to, I'm definitely not, you know, disparaging that Cool Death's record, but I'm glad that both versions are, are out there, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I think it also does a really good job at um, kind of changing up the vibe of a lot of tracks. Like, I think Block of Ice being a lot less livelier in yeah. the Hounds, I think, is a really cool, you know, it, yeah. it's really cool the different directions that that specific song goes through, definitely, for sure. Yeah, there was a uh, a version of that recorded for Sucks Blood that I don't I don't think has ever been released. It was going to be the oh, first really? first track, and then I think it shows up later on after I was no longer in the band. It got, it, I, was it on Master's Bedroom or something? Yeah, I, can't remember. I was always yeah. I always was confused because Master's Bedroom is always showed released before the Hounds, and I was like, did he come back for this or was it just? Makes no, sense. we that was originally recorded. There's a, a version of that um, that was recorded for Sucks Blood. I don't know where, I don't know where it is. Um, well, maybe we'll get it one day. But uh, yeah, maybe somebody it might, it might still be floating around somewhere on a tape or CDR. Kelly Stoltz uh, recorded that record. Who knows? Maybe he still has a tape somewhere. <laughs> Do you think it's possible that you would come back for a future OCS or OCs record? Maybe. Um, I mean, it's kind of difficult. I live in like the opposite corner of the yeah. country from China. You know, I think if yeah. we, um, I mean, we talked about this when I was out there for memory of a cutoff head. Uh, you know, if we didn't live thousands of miles apart we would probably get together a lot more often um but i think uh there's nothing planned you know yeah i'm i'm not opposed to it but it's, it's definitely not anything that's like in the works or or anything like that uh I don't know. John and Bridget might be working on more like acoustic stuff at this point. I'm not sure. I feel like that might be possible because they had announced a few shows in San Francisco as like oh, a yeah, yeah. thing. That's and I right. Was like, yeah. what could this mean? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't know. Bridget's got a great voice. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure John gets tired. <laughs> would love to switch it up and and play a show where he's sitting down for a little bit or something um so yeah i wouldn't be surprised if they're working together uh, cool. still yeah i had a i had just a kind of interesting question i was wondering how do you think visual art um encourages or inspires like the um, actual music aspect of some stuff do you think that you know do you think that some of your because some of your singles um that you've released on Bandcamp they have some pretty interesting artwork on there do you think that you gain inspiration from a lot of physical art sometimes and do you have any like favorite physical artists or um, photographers or something like that well all that all that uh all those photos on band all that artwork on Bandcamp is is me um so that's my that's all my photos or or whatnot um and it definitely uh it's like uh it goes with the music and mm -hmm. they're, they're in very intentionally put together uh in most cases um especially recently uh that's become more true uh but yeah i mean i think inspiration for music doesn't you know it, it's not only coming from other music um you know uh, movies are a big inspiration. You know, me and John watched a ton of ton of movies together when we were working on stuff together. Uh, and I've always kind of been interested in soundtrack music. Um, but as far as visual artists go, there's a lot of stuff I like. I really like Bridget Riley, the the British op art painter. It does this very okay, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. painting. Um, Uh, what else? I don't know. That's the first thing that comes to mind usually is Bridget Riley. Uh, I have a lot of interest in uh, Gerhard Richter's work, who's the 
German photorealist painter uh, who does these kind of large paintings that look like photos or like even more interestingly, slightly out of focus photos, but they're like, okay. uh, they, they look like photos. It's, it's kind of mind boggling. I like things like that, that sort of play with perception. Do you, do okay, you know for what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Like things yeah. that sort of have a, uh, you know, whether it's like an optical illusion or on a more sort of philosophical basis, like things that, that, are intended to make you think or or give you pause i guess yeah. i'm not really i'm not always into light entertainment i i guess is what i'm i'm saying I'm okay a, for I'm sure a, i'm a little bit of an art snob i'll admit <laughs> i get you do you think yeah. you're um i mean i know that you haven't made a lot of a lot of solo stuff um in recent years you've only made a few tracks but do you think that yeah. your approach with inspiration has kind of changed over time especially with the more avant-garde uh dronier stuff that you've been working on mm, no because I, I i was doing stuff like that before uh okay. i think like some of the old the the if you go to you know like the stuff down at the bottom of the band camp page some of the okay hey. oh we're back i think we like okay, ran out back. of time or something i don't know but it yeah just yeah i think they totally crashed 30 minute limit or something um oh, okay uh but yeah um yeah, all that like kind of uh, like avant-garde drony stuff. Um, you know, I mean, some of that shows up on those OCS and, and OCS records, and I've definitely been doing it bef before then and and since then. I think uh, it's gotten more composed and less uh, improv based. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. you, you made that thing. one. You made that one like I think it was like a forty-two minute long track. It was very. Yeah. Like yeah that's uh just like six sine waves basically it's just um yeah some of it some of the stuff is like i mean that that one in particular is is just straight up math yeah uh, you know right literally it, it's um i mean i i eventually did end up getting a math degree so it's it's something that i've studied and uh shows up in some of those later compositions for sure some of them are really mathematically based so that's mm -hmm. cool yeah for sure yeah it's not the best thing to do with a math degree but it's the most interesting <laughs> thing i've come up with so far so yeah um i was pretty curious um if you have given a listen or have any insight on modern ocs or if you you know would consider yourself a fan um and in the new directions that they've been going recently yeah uh i i definitely listen i listen to pretty much everything that that uh my friends do including john um some stuff i only listen to like once um some stuff i'll go back to more than that i like a lot of the uh more side projecty stuff that he like does. the free jazz kind of stuff yeah that he does. yeah yeah i mean the band is great you know um but i can also recognize that it's great and it's not necessarily always my thing you know yeah. what I mean? like yeah for sure um i just don't listen to a lot of like rock music these days honestly um I listen to way more like rap music than than rock music at this point in my life um okay like jazz records or whatever you know i just am not i've heard so much rock music in my life that it has to be something really like outstanding or spectacularly weird for it That's to like, yeah. feel for me at the you know what i mean like there's just other stuff that i'm i'm more interested in at this point well, well i'm happy I... to hear that oh sorry sorry one more thing <laughs> I'm happy to hear that you know music hasn't taken any backseat in your life. Like you're still you're still into music and you know, oh yeah, you know, totally yeah, yeah for sure. Sorry, right, that's all I was gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> we've been talking over each other the whole time. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Well, on the note of like what you've been listening to recently, what were the first and last albums that you got? Mm. Like, be it records or CDs or whatever. Right. Um, I think the first first record I bought, uh, 
it, it had to be an REM record. I'm just trying to remember which one it would have been. Um, probably Reckoning, that second full length REM album. I grew up in the South, and uh, you know REM was from Georgia, so they were they had they had kind of hometown hero status. Okay. Um, and they were uh, Southerners doing something that was kind of weird, you know. So I, a lot of people in the region definitely really uh, grabbed onto that, you know, um, or got into it. I, I guess, yeah, they were. Uh, pretty big for me when I was, you know, early, early junior high, high school years, whatever. Um, and the most recent thing I bought was uh, probably the most recent Arm & Hammer record, rap, Raptor from New York, Rap Duo. Oh, Billy yeah. Rose, Lucid, yeah. Mm -hmm. That record's great. Um yeah so cool yeah the, the production and the, a lot of his stuff is really really nice i really yeah. like um i'm sure you're familiar with the uh, alchemist the producer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i think mm -hmm. he does a really really good job at expanding a lot of you know rap music into different genres and stuff like that yeah um in some ways i feel like uh especially you know the indie rap um, I read something this morning that actually referred to this stuff as dad rap. And I was like, well, it's like, I am a dad and I do listen to this stuff all the time. So I guess it's not, not off base. Um, yeah, I just feel like the production, just the musical stuff that's going on in a lot of rap music, indie rap stuff these days is, is way more interesting than, than a lot of what I oh, hear. Oh yeah, like, for sure. You know, like, um, it's a lot more adventurous and, uh, a lot of the writing, um, I appreciate a lot of these older rappers who are writing from the perspective of an older person and not trying to play off as if they're still these young yeah. kind of party animal yeah. type guys, which seems a lot less common in rock music. And, you know, um, that that sort of portrayal of, of what it's like to be an adult. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Uh, for sure yeah so i'm a big like record collector and stuff like that i'm sure mm -hmm. you kind of noticed when i sent you those records but yeah. uh what what's your personal collection look like from an oc's perspective like do you have any crazy items in there no i don't um i do have some flyers i have some old flyers That's and cool. uh a couple of like drawings and paintings that John has given to me over the years. Uh, but as far as like OCs or OCS releases, um, pretty much I have, I have the stuff I, I played on. I have like a copy of everything. I don't have like a, a backlog. Um, I think for a while I had spare copies and I was selling them off. Uh, um, but right now I just, I don't have anything that's like super weird. I have the grave blockers, you know, yeah. original lathe cut and all that. Um, I think that's probably the craziest thing I have. Probably the flyers and uh, drawings or paintings that John has given to me are. are do you think there's the any chance? You, do you think there's any um, chance you could uh, send me pictures of those flyers and paintings so I could like add them to the archive? Yeah, I'll see what I'll see what I can uh, dig up. I had a lot of stuff deep in the closet, um, but it's fun to dig around sometimes. See what I can find. Cool, because there's a big yeah. like OC's archive project for old stuff, and I'm sure a lot of that hasn't been seen before. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I have anything interesting. Um, huh? That's, that's I might have to look at it. There's probably some stuff there I haven't seen in a while. Cool. Um, I'm sure you've seen John's book of flyers. Yeah, I want it so bad. It's so like yeah. rare to find a copy for sale. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe that's another rare item I have. I guess. Um, yeah, there's some good some good flyers from the early early days are reproduced in there, uh, along with a lot of other fun stuff. Yeah, one of my. Uh... Was, um, oh, sorry. 
I think Edie oh. was pretty archival with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think he he definitely uh, kept a lot of stuff. I think he has a separate account where he just he shows off a lot of his older archive OCs and OCS stuff. I'm pretty sure, which is really okay. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll look for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say I've been on the hunt to try to find some of that old stuff. It'd just be cool to have it, and nonetheless, just to see it would be awesome as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I always assume that uh, at this point, most of most of what there is to be unearthed has been unearthed. They have such a uh, committed fan base at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of it's kind of funny to see. Um, I got, was talking to Mike Donovan a few months ago, and uh, we were talking about how they're. Uh, it's almost like they're like a Grateful Dead kind of band right yeah. now with, in terms of their uh fan base loyalty and sort of the culture that surrounds them it's you know it's it's very cool following whole, it's grown into this yeah. whole thing you know yeah for sure oh uh, yeah i have yeah. A, i have like all sorts of one-off dwyer things that a lot of people mm -hmm. don't even know about <laughs> yeah yeah he's very productive man he's he's on a mission <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, I was I was curious. I don't know if this is like online. I just kind of thought about this. Um, did what was kind of the um inclusion of PD and Bridget into the band? Did you have any personal connections with them beforehand, or? Uh, Bridget was, was worked at a, there? Bridget worked at a coffee shop down the street from where me and John lived, and we would go oh, okay. in there. We would go in there almost every morning. Um. And uh, yeah, we just kind of got to know her that way. And she was in another band um, that was, oh, what is it, a trio, like to her and another vocalist and a guitar player. It was very low key, like kind of jazzy indie stuff. Um, but we had gotten to know her and we went and saw this this project she was doing play and and we're just kind of like oh we're we need this person you know yeah. John really wanted someone to harmonize with and uh i am not that person <laughs> like, <laughs> singing has never been my strong suit um but yeah when we heard her sing we were like yeah this is this is the the right fit and pd we just knew pd from from around from other bands and I'm sure he was pretty uh, active as well. Yeah, he was doing a lot of kind of noise band stuff. He was in this band called Big Techno Werewolves with with Mike Donovan and Eric Bauer, um, mm. and this other guy Dino. Uh, and they were they were great in their own bizarre way. Um, but Petey was also this like really good. Uh, like finger picking guitar player um who could, who could do some really amazing stuff uh on guitar and i i think at some point the idea just got floated like what if what if we have pd playing second guitar and uh it sounded great and i think i think in some ways you know made things easier for for john because he wasn't trying to carry all of the guitar stuff himself mm -hmm. um definitely made made live shows smoother once we had more people in because there was less yeah, weight on, on just the two of us to sort of do everything and if there's only two of you and something goes off it's really noticeable you know? yeah. um, but then you know you got someone with this exceptional voice and this this really fantastic musician backing you up and and everyone looks better oh yeah so, I bet. yeah 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 um yeah, it's weird. I don't think a lot of people realize like how good of a guitar player PD is, but he's like really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Nolan, were you gonna ask your the teacher uh, question? Uh, what? I I don't really have anything else. Oh, really? Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. I think I've asked everything that I need to ask Ben too. 
Okay. Yeah, for cool. sure. Thank you so much for your Actually, time, man. I, mean, oh, I do wait. have one yeah. other thing. Okay. Okay. Do you, could you uh, point us in the direction of any other former OCs members we might be able to get in touch with for another interview? Um, we'll hone our craft a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, there's some OCs members who I barely know. Uh, but. You know, I bet if you could, uh, if you could convince PD to talk to you, I bet, I bet you could have a real interesting conversation on your hands there. Um, you might have to wear him down a little, but uh, yeah. All right. Does he yeah, have like sure. a? I'll, I'll, I'll try to find his email to contact him. Yeah, I'm sure he's on. PD's always been like a big social media guy. Uh, you probably track him down on Instagram or whatever. I don't know. I've always been hands off with that stuff, but uh, yeah, I think Petey's pretty active on all, on a lot of that. Cool. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks for yeah, your time. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Good luck. Uh, oh, I thanks.